section twelve of the goodness of saint roque and other stories by alice dunbar nelson this librivox recording is in the public domain odalie now and then carnival time comes at the time of the good saint valentine and then sometimes it comes as late as the warm days in march when spring is indeed upon us and the greenness of the grass outvies the green in the royal standards days and days before the carnival proper new orleans begins to take on a festive appearance here and there the royal flags with their glowing greens and violets and yellow appear and then as if by magic the streets and buildings flame and burst like poppies out of bud into a glorious refulgence of colour that steeps the senses into a languorous acceptance of warmth and beauty on mardi gras day as you know it is a town gone mad with folly a huge mass ball emptied into the streets at daylight a meeting of all nations on common ground a potpourri of every conceivable human ingredient but faintly describes it all there are music and flowers cries and laughter and song and joyousness and never an aching heart to show its sorrow or dim the happiness of the streets a wondrous thing this carnival but the old cronies down in french town who know everything and can recite you many a story tell of one sad heart on mardi gras years ago it was a woman's of course for il est toujours les femmes qui sont malheureuses says an old proverb and perhaps it is right this woman a child she would be called elsewhere save in this land of tropical growth and precocity lost her heart to one who never knew a very common story by the way but one which would have been quite distasteful to the haughty judge her father had he known odalie was beautiful odalie was haughty too but gracious enough to those who pleased her dainty fancy in the old french house on royal street with its quaint windows and spanish courtyard green and cool and made musical by the plashing of the fountain and the trill of caged birds lived odalie in convent-like seclusion monsieur le juge was determined no hawk should break through the cage and steal his dove and so though there was no mother a stern duenna aunt kept faithful watch alas for the precautions of la tante bright eyes that search for other bright eyes in which lurks the spirit of youth and mischiefs are ever on the lookout even in church dutifully was odalie marched to the cathedral every sunday to mass and tante louise nodding devoutly over her beads could not see the blushes and glances full of meaning a whole code of signals as it were that passed between odalie and pierre the impecunious young clerk in the court-room odalie loved perhaps because there was not much else to do when one is shut up in a great french house with a grim sleepy taunt and no companions of one's own age life becomes a dull thing and one is ready for any new sensation particularly if in the veins there bounds the tempestuous spanish french blood that m le juge boasted of so odalie hugged the image of her pierre during the weekdays and played tremulous little love songs to it in the twilight when la tante dozed over her devotion book and on sundays at mass there were glances and blushes and mayhap at some especially remembered time the touch of finger-tips at the holy water font while la tante dropped her last genuflection then came the carnival time and one little heart beat faster as the grey house on royal street hung out its many-hued flags and draped its grim front with glowing colours it was to be a time of joy and relaxation when every one could go abroad and in the crowds one could speak to whom one chose unconscious plans formulated and the petite odalie was quite happy as the time drew near only think tante louise she would cry what a happy time it is to be but tante louise only grumbled as was her wont it was mardi gras day at last and early through her window odalie could hear the jingle of folly bells on the maskers costumes the tinkle of music and the echoing strains of songs up to her ears there floated the laughter of the older maskers and the screams of the little children frightened at their own images under the mask and domino 
what a hurry to be out and in the motley merry throng to be pacing royal street to canal street where was life and the world they were tired eyes with which odalie looked at the gay pageant at last tired with watching throng after throng of maskers of the unmasked of peering into the carts full of singing minstrels into carriages of revellers hoping for a glimpse of pierre the devout the allegorical carts rumbling by with their important red-clothed horses were beginning to lose charm the disguises showed tawdry even the gay-hued flags fluttered sadly to odalie mardi gras was a tiresome day after all she sighed and tante louise agreed with her for once six o'clock had come an hour when all masks must be removed the long red rays of the setting sun glinted athwart the many-hued costumes of the revellers trooping unmasked homeward to rest for the night's last mad frolic down toulouse street there came the merriest throng of all young men and women in dainty fairy-like garb dancers and dresses of the picturesque empire a butterfly or two and a dame here and there with powdered hair and graces of olden time singing with unmasked faces they danced toward tante louise and odalie she stood with eyes lustrous and tear heavy for there in the front was pierre pierre the faithless his arms about the slender waist of a butterfly whose tinseled powdered hair floated across the lace ruffles of his empire coat pierre cried odalie softly no one heard for it was a mere faint breath and fell unheeded instead the laughing throng pelted her with flowers and candy and went their way and even pierre did not see you see when one is shut up in the grim walls of a royal street house with no one but a tante louise and a grim judge how is one to learn that in this world there are faithless ones who may glance tenderly into one's eyes at mass and pass the holy water on caressing fingers without being madly in love there was no one to tell odalie so she sat at home in the dull first days of lent and nursed her dear dead love and mourned as women have done from time immemorial over the faithlessness of man and when one day she asked that she might go back to the ursulines convent where her childish days were spent only to go this time as a nun m le juge and tante louise thought it quite the proper and convenient thing to do for how were they to know the secret of that mardi gras day End of section twelve